Are you new to saltwater fly fishing like I am and not too sure what you need for that first trip? We have a fly fishing expert here to help us out. Hey guys, it's Ryan from SportRx and we're in beautiful Port O'Connor, Texas. And I am here with Kevin Townsend, a fly fishing expert. He has been fly fishing for 40 years and guiding people for over 35. And today he's here to provide us some tips for your first saltwater fly fishing trip. Kevin, let's jump into it. Sure, ma'am. You know, Ryan, the first thing I think about as I'm sitting here looking at this cool clothing <laughs> that we both have on, your shirt, just what you're gonna wear for the day is one thing you need to think about. Two things you need to think about as far as your shirt, comfort, you know, deal with a lot of heat out here. Yeah, we, we did like yesterday, days, right? These nice moisture wicking, evaporative cooling kind of shirts like this, technical shirts. It's a great product out these days. And also keep in mind the color that you're gonna wear. Right. In that we're in super shallow water, clear water, spooky fish. So we need to blend in with our environment. And the environment that the fish sees looking up at you is the sky. So this is a great sky camouflage. Gotcha. Like this. Mm -hmm. This would work on a gray cloudy day. <laughs> you want to avoid bright colors. Okay. Uh, a bright white is not good because of all the white shorebirds that we see. There's a fear that the fish have of those birds. Oh, and they'll get spooked as long it, as they see that exactly. bright color. You don't want bright reds and oranges mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. So just blend in with your environment is key. Yeah. You know, Ryan, something else that we learned the last couple of days, you remember all those cooler lids? Oh man, I was the worst of that. Every time I grabbed the water, I was slamming that thing. And you look back at me like, what the hell are you doing? We're in shallow water, you know, this deep to this deep, spooky fish, and everything that hits the bottom of that boat, sound just goes out from the boat, vibrations go out from the boat. So you gotta be super quiet with your footsteps, and especially slamming then, the lid. Yeah, the slam that cooler. cooler, I was the worst at that. Seems simple, but you gotta think about it. Yeah, so we saw a lot of big uh, redfish jumping away from as soon as I was doing that. It was not good. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. We're learning. <laughs> We're learning. Something else that you saw these last few days <laughs> is the guide who's on the polling platform can see a little bit better because of his height yes. than the guy in the front. So he's gonna be calling the shot, calling the position of the fish that yeah. you're gonna be trying to locate to fish to. And we do that by using the clock, meaning straight forward, right down the center line of the boat is 12 o'clock. A little bit to the right would be one o'clock, a little bit more two o'clock, and then off your body would be three o'clock. Same thing over here, nine, 10, 11, 12. What you really need to focus on though, is that you're calibrated with the other person in that you're calling three and nine off of his body. Gotcha, right to the sides. To the sides. A lot of people though like to call it off of the boat, which would switch three and nine o'clock to the center point of the boat, to the right and to the left, and then adjust from there. So you just wanna make sure you're on the same page and you have your directions calibrated. And in your opinion, do you think it's better to go off the person in the back or go off the person who's fishing? It's, it's better, I think, to go off the person that's fishing instead of off of the boat. And why would you say that? Simply because of the majority of the people just intuitively uh, uh, go there. They're, they're thinking it's off of their body instead of the boat. Gotcha. You know, one thing that not many people think about, most people are gonna go fly fishing four or five times a yeah. year, you know, which is a, a good number. Can't go every day like you, right? <laughs> exactly. So their fly line stays on their reel for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And this line will gain memory. You see the coils that are coming off. Yeah, I do. Okay, well those coils, as you saw, tangle as you're trying to cast the line through the guides. So what I like to tell people to do is the night before you're gonna go fishing, stretch the entire line out off of the reel. Get all the line off. Don't leave a single inch on there. stretch, and you can even stand on it and pull up on it, but really stretch all that memory. You see how that memory just disappears? Yeah, is there any specific length or just do it like every, just, I was like doing like right now. Just like okay. this, until you have the whole line done. And then in my condo or ho hotel room, wherever I'm at, I actually strip all the line out and I just run it on the floor of my room, just like this until I have all the line out straight, getting all those little kinky little memory spots out of it. And you're gonna have a much easier time the next day 
not having the problem with tangled line trying to go through the guy. So if you stretched it out and then you put it right back right away, is it still gonna be all coiled up the next day even it, though you stretched it? It'll be better, but it's better if you can keep it out overnight. Okay. Stretched, and like I say, unless you've got a 100 foot long hotel room, you just need to run it back and forth like this. Just You just don't want the small coils on there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that people don't think about when it comes to fly line, you know, saltwater fishing, this is gonna get coated with salt every day. You step on it in the boat a few times and it gets a little grit and dirt in it. That causes friction between the line and the guides, okay? So if you had a smooth coating, which the fly line actually comes with when you buy it, if it's smooth and lubricated, it's gonna flow easier. So you take this neat little tool right here, which is a fly line cleaner. You just open it up. You have fly line cleaner, put a little cleaner in there, close that. Put the line then you put in the between. line Let's see. right in that little gap right there. It's made to put line through, pinch it down, and you just run the entire length of the line through this tool. And then I reverse it back and do it again. That helps stretch it too, but then it coats it and cleans it for a smoother, easier casting. Now say you forget to do it after, how many trips can you go with before it starts becoming a serious problem? I have clients that have never cleaned their lines and they can't cast 15 feet with that line. That's, that's really just joking, but uh, I like to do it every time. Uh, in salt water, you have a lot of things, you know, dirt and salt, dirt and salt aren't good for your reel or your line. So I'm really conscious about washing everything every day. I'm right gonna spray after. my reels and rods off every day and I clean my line every day. Every day. It just makes for a, a lot easier casting, so it's worth doing it every day. There is something called the trout set, and we're talking about setting a hook. If you're using using a conventional rod and the fish is out there and he takes the bait, we set the hook by going up with the rod. And you're setting the hook with the strength of that rod right there, okay? And there's plenty of strength there to embed that hook. Even in a tarpon, you would still come up in an upward set. Now the difference in that and setting the hook on a fly rod is the fly rod simply does not have the strength in the tip to embed a hook in a tarpon or a redfish's mouth. Redfish's mouth is underslung. Tarpon's mouth is like a piece of concrete, like a hadite block. So you really have to drive the hook in. So there's not enough strength in the tip. So what you have to do as you are fishing your fly in, you're stripping, you're stripping, you're stripping, and he hits and you have to set the hook with the strip set. And this is the strip set, just, just bringing the slack out of the line, embedding the hook. When you feel the fish is on solid, do it right away. Then you just lift your tip then, and then you can get the bend in your rod to fight the fish with. As you saw yesterday, we were drifting towards those tarpon. That current was pushing yeah, us so very hard. Strong yesterday. Thomas and I both were having a hard time with this strip set because the boat was moving so quickly at the fish, we just couldn't seem to come tight. And that's just one of the difficult things about fly fishing. But anyway, just keep in mind, when you're fly fishing in salt water with a fly rod, do not set the hook with the tip of the rod, that's strip perfect. set with the line. What would you say is the most important tip for you when you're going out to salt water fly fishing? That's a question that I get asked all the time at little seminars that I give or CCA banquets or whatever. And it's always, what is your most important piece of equipment? And people are thinking flies, rods, reels. Real. Where it all starts in sight fishing is your eyeballs. You have to see the fish. So what becomes your most important piece of equipment is right there. Those sunglasses. Sunglasses. And you need to use the proper pair of sunglasses for the environment that you're fishing. That's correct. Behind us here we have open bay water. Probably gonna fish a little deeper water if you're fishing this kind of water. And I prefer more of a gray with maybe a blue reflective on open water situations where we were fishing in the flats for redfish. Redfish are actually show up reddish, pinkish in the water. So this copper tint that you have and I have here 
really brings those reds out. Which is what we were using yesterday. And I mean, exactly. they really did make a huge difference. And you difference. can see that contrast. You know, we have a, a lot of green bottom and white bottom and yellow bottom with a red fish. So this copper lens just kind of pops that red out and it makes the red fish a lot easier to see. Wow, Kevin, those are some really awesome tips. Thank you for providing that for saltwater fly fishing. If you guys like this video, we would really like a thumbs up and for you to subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments. I will make it back to you. If you have any questions for KT, you can follow him on social media at KT Diaries. We're gonna go catch some fish, guys. Later.